good deal. If you have your uh, handouts in front of you, we talked about uh, some holiness teachings. Now watch me. Even though I'm a, a Southern Baptist pastor, preacher, teacher, whatever you want to call me, um, I still believe in holiness. I believe in holiness teachings. I believe that I am a temple. I believe that my body does not belong to me. My, belo my body belongs to the Lord. So that means everything, watch me, this is so true. Now I know people get carried away with it. But I really believe from everything that I eat, everything that I drink, everything that goes in my body, it either defiles it or it builds it up. It's true. Now, it's funny. I I've seen pastors get on television. They'll sit there and talk about don't drink, smoke, chew, or do. But they'll end up weighing 500 pounds. Now, listen to me. I'm, I'm just being honest with you tonight. That's wrong, okay? Because here's the thing. I should never have to condemn you. I am not here to condemn you. I'm here to preach the Word. And when the seed goes out, the Word goes out. The Bible says it will not come back void. So that means if you give God your ears here tonight, you will leave blessed in this house tonight. That means that when God's Word goes forward, it, it will not come back. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been smacked around by churches. I don't know about you, I've been to seminaries. And I've been in, in college settings where they get there and they, they tell you things. you got to do this. you got to wear that. And you can't do this. And you can't do that. And I'm sitting there going, my God. We're all going to go to hell. It's just the truth. So listen to it. The Bible says work out your salvation. The biggest thing I can tell you guys in here tonight is this. I can get up here and preach you until I'm blue in the face. Work out your own salvation. Work out your own salvation. Work out your own salvation. If you take care of you and your salvation, that's a full-time job. We don't have time to critique. We don't have time to blast. We don't have time to tear down. We got time to build up and bring the best out of people. That's what you got to do. If you start doing it, listen to me. If you start working in the spirit, if you start speaking life, and you start bringing the best out of people, they'll want to be around you. The reason why people don't want to come to church is because that they've been talked about. That they've been dogged on too long. So I like people when they come in here and they see me in blue jeans. I don't like suits. I wear them every once in a while. Had a woman at this church. It's so funny. I don't think she's here tonight. <laughs> but anyway, she came to me and she said, I had on blue jeans and I had on a, a, a polo shirt. And I always wear blue, uh, black shoes. And they was like, you look like Johnny Cash. I look. So I don't know. Anyway, uh, but uh, she came to me and she said, Preacher? She said, uh, she said, you dressed down a little bit today, didn't you? And I looked at her and I said, I don't know why. And she said, where's the suit? And I said, same place your dress is. <laughs> you said, did you say that? And yes, I did. Because here's the deal. Everybody thinks because I got real, or brother, or preacher, or teacher in front of my name, I've got to be so much different. But I praise God tonight that God don't look at the blue jeans I got on. He looks at the heart inside my body. He loves you for being blind. He loves you for being you. Amen? So tonight... Uh, I really believe the reason why a lot of Pentecostals, to say all that what I did, to tell you where I'm at, I really believe that a lot of the Pentecostal churches have, have smacked people down. You, you, you've got to do this. You've got to do that. If you mess up, you've got to get saved all over again. You've got to get baptized all over again. And I'm telling you, if that was the case, I couldn't work. I'd have to stay at church all day. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't do nothing. I had to be going to the priest or whatever, you know, whatever. And then I do something, you know. But uh, but that's just what I found. I've talked to Bobby, and I've got I've got two or three Pentecostal friends, and I love them. But they're pretty hardcore. They're pretty hardcore. And I understand where they're coming from. They'll say, "Well, Brian, y'all y'all believe in cheap grace." That's what the the favorite answer they tell me all the time. They say, "Y'all believe in cheap grace." I said, "No, it, it cost you." Yeah. I said, it, it, "It killed Jesus." And I said, one day, my sin's going to kill me. But praise God, I believe that grace is sufficient for all things. I believe if God's able to save me, He's able to keep me. That's where I'm not big enough to lose myself. I'm not big enough to save myself either. So I just think that everything, everything, this is a, a teaching that I believe goes over to the Baptist area, but we said, yeah, amen. But I believe everything belongs to God. Amen. amen. Everything belongs to God. The pew you sit in, no, it's not Elkhorn's. It's the Lord's. Right. 
And when you start thinking like that, I belong to God, that pew belongs to God, my car belongs to God, my children belong to God, my dog belongs to God, hallelujah. Everything belongs to the Lord. And when you start thinking like that, man, it puts you from a different mindset. And uh, because I really think that if salvation depends upon me, watch this, I go to heaven. If my salvation depended upon me, I'd go to hell. All of us would. Because I'm not good enough. And you aren't either. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the second point about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And watch this. I do believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I get in trouble a lot for making that statement. But I have to believe it. Because the Bible teaches it. Okay? Now watch this. you got a pastor in front of you. I don't, sometimes I, I'm very, I know you may not see it, but sometimes I'm very insecure. There'll be a time I'll make a, a, a statement, and that's why if the Holy Spirit don't show up when I'm teaching, I'll pass out. I can't stand. But if the Holy Spirit starts working, you can say things, and God will give you revelatory words. He'll speak unto you and give you words that's not written on paper. Hey, it blows Haywood's mind. He said, Brian, how in the world do you do what you do? And I'm like, I don't know. I just get up and let it go. I study, but I just let it go. So I do believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Let's, let's, I, want, I want to clarify this. Make sure that we're all on the same page here tonight, okay? When you get saved, when you get born again, God, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Lord, forgive me of all of them. I, I, I know that I'm like filthy rags, God, but I'm asking you to come into my heart and save my soul. When you do that, it's three in one, one in three. You get the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's a package deal. They're not separate entities. It's a package deal, okay? It's just like water. Water is a substance. It's, it's a liquid. But it can be a liquid, it can be a vapor, and it can be a solid. But it's still H2O. Like an apple. An apple is an apple, but you've got the skin, you've got the, the, you got the apple, then you've got the core. It's three, but it's still one. You see what I'm saying? That's how I describe the Holy Spirit, just like water or apple. <laughs> It's three and one, one and three. When you get one, you get it all. Okay? You can't buy the core without getting the apple. I believe when the Spirit comes on you, your spirit leaps. It leaps, man. It leaps. It leaps. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit, not all, but most Pentecostal churches believe that every believer must, this is a must, okay? Receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. This is hardcore Pentecostal. This is universal Pentecostal, okay? These are some Pentecostal teachings of holiness that they say, you know what? If you are a Christian, but you do not speak in tongues, you are not saved. Watch this. You are. Because watch this. Tongues, listen, tongues has nothing to do with what my gift of salvation that God has given me. It's evidence but it's not my salvation. Somebody say amen. It's not my salvation. You can speak in tongues and still cuss like a sailor. I've seen it happen. I've seen people in services before lift hands, gym, sit there and speak in tongues and walk out. And, and, and I'm not lying to you. Have a big old cigarette in your hand sitting there going like that and cussing like a sailor. It's the truth. It's a hard teaching, but it's the truth. So tongues does not dictate am I saved or not. By the confession of my mouth and believing in my heart that He is God, you are saved. Romans chapter 10 verse 9. So my, my confession and my, my obedience to my heart, not the tongues, not laying on hands of people, don't get confused, because I really want to educate you guys, don't get confused. I've seen people lay hands on people, I've seen them go out in the Spirit, and I've seen them sin. But that ain't got nothing to do with my salvation. You see what I'm saying? So, do I believe that? No, I do not. I'll tell you straight up, I do not believe that because you cannot back it up with the Scripture. If you can back it up with the Scripture, I will give you attention on that tonight. But the Bible says in Galatians chapter 1, y'all listen to me, in Galatians chapter 1, if it's anything added to Jesus, it, it, I'm telling you, it's damnation. If you say Jesus plus tongues equals salvation, it's damnation. Amen. If you say Jesus plus baptism, it is damnation. And damnation means to be damned to hell. It's exactly what it means. You say, Brian, that's pretty tough. Hell is tough. You're not going to go down there and sit on a, a, a log and watch the birds float by or whatever. You're not going to do that. 
If you go, you, you swore the, I'm telling you, you swore the worm never died. You feel you you're in hell, you're in fire. Right, but where I, is their rationale? Huh? Where is their rationale for that belief? They go to Acts. And in Acts uh, chapter 18, 19, uh, Acts chapter 4, there's a scripture where they said, and it's confusing scriptures if you don't study it out correctly, but they'll sit and say that these people who, like John, they said, who baptized you? And they said, well, John baptized me. And they said, well, you need to be baptized in Jesus' name. And then they said, they baptized them, they laid hands on them, then they received tongues. Now, you say, Brian, do you believe in tongues? Yes, I do. Do you believe people can lay hands on you and give you tongues? I don't believe man, man has the power to give you anything. I believe God is the gift of the, He's the giver of the gift. He's the giver of the gift. He's the giver of the gift. Everything that you've got is a gift from Jesus Christ. Everything that we've got is a gift that comes from God and comes from above to me and you. Use for His purpose. Use for His purpose. <laughs> So where they get this teaching at is that through Acts, they'll sit and say, well, they laid hands on people and they had the evidence of speaking in tongues. And there is a scripture in the Bible that says that salvation is, by the speaking of tongues is the evidence of your salvation. Yes, I do believe that could be an evidence of your salvation, but that's not my salvation. You see where I'm going? If you're not careful, listen to me. If you're not, I'm, I'm not the greatest teacher. I'm going to tell you, I'm not the greatest preacher. I'm going to be one day. But here's what I would tell you. If you you twist the, a verse just a little bit, just a, I'm talking a little bit. It's like getting in an airplane and getting all in that airplane and getting off one degree in that airplane going from here to China. You know where you end up? Not in China. You're gonna be off course. And if you if you twist the word just a little bit, you're gonna get off course. And I'm telling you, I really believe with all of my heart that a lot of people have gotten off course because they have been taught the wrong way. I really believe that. Okay? So like you said, they're trying to add something to Jesus' name for salvation, and you know, that's, that's not right. And that's exactly what they do. You can read most Pentecostal denomination, their, their, uh, uh, what they, their beliefs, and they'll tell you that speaking in tongues, it's a necessity, it's a must for a, for a person who is saved because it's the evidence of their salvation. Okay. Uh, I noticed that the Pentecostal this area. It's so different than the Pentecostals I was around in the West End of Kentucky. And I want to explain something because I thought all Pentecostals were the same. And I found out they're not all the same. Just like you have three branches of Mormon churches, you have several branches of Pentecostal churches. And the Pentecostal churches that I had, my, some of my friends had went to uh, when I questioned their faith, because I was, I'm always the kind of person, I want to find out what people believe, you know, I, and I don't want to stereotype them all at once. I want to find out what do you really believe, you know, in your church here. And I found out that some of the ones here believe different than the ones down there. And I, I guess it may be that they're different branches, just like you have different branches of Baptist, different branches of Methodist, different branches of Christian, Christian church, and different branches of well, anyway, their interpretation of the times part was they don't believe it is evidence of your salvation, but they did believe it was evidence of receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I've heard that too. So they don't really say that it is a evidence that you're saved, but it is evidence that when you do uh, release more of yourself to the Holy Spirit, or, you know, because they believe that once you're saved, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So they believe in the three in one. And Assembly God does. Because I'm at Assembly God Church for 10 years. And they believe you are, like, sealed with, you know, you get the three in one, you know, you, when you get saved. But they also believe that, that Jesus is also the baptizer of the Holy Spirit. And he's the one that baptizes you in the Holy Spirit. I feel like that, you know, there will come a time in your Christian walk where you may open yourself up more and that gift is stirred up in you through receiving more of the Holy Spirit. You know, like if the Holy Spirit's there, but you're allowing yourself to receive what's already there, more of it. It's like it's already there. And um, so basically, 
you know, I have found out through my experiences through the years that there are so many branches out there. And I can go to, I had been in visit with one Pentecostal church and I would just like totally disagree with them. And I'd be just like, you know, y'all are taking this out of my head, like you said. You know, they would think, if you don't speak in tongues, you're not saved. If you wear curves, you know, you pull your hair and wear a red dress, you're going to hell. It would be very legalistic. And I'd be like, no, that's not right, you know. And, and I wouldn't be afraid to tell them. I don't believe like that. That's not how I see it. I would tell them my view and, and how I understood the word and everything. Sometimes you just have to agree to this because you know it's not just argue with people. So I just agree with people, disagree with this group. And I would just thank them for whatever for sharing with me and whatever. But uh, I have found that to be true, that there are different um, beliefs within the group. And the same way it is with Southern Baptists too. We got there's like uh, even in this county there's 127 different churches right here in Kimmelsville, Kentucky, and some of them you say they're Southern Baptists, but I know Southern Baptists believe in Paul and Grace. I, I, it's just crazy the things that you hear. Uh, let me let me tell you this real quick. The best evidence that you can give is not speaking in tongues. It is you living out Jesus. You got me. Yep. You can speak in tongues all you want to. Right. And you, if you cuss like a son of watching, I ain't following you. Right. But if I if you don't speak in tongues, and I here's you got a preacher in front of yours deal. I don't think you have to speak in tongues to be to be saved. Nope. You do not. But I've heard that. And I've I've just told you that. But there's and I, I've heard that a lot in my life. But the best evidence that people need in this world is you say, Yep, I'm born again, I'm saved. <laughs> is that you live out Jesus Christ in your life. That's, right. That's the best evidence that you can ever have in your life. 1 Corinthians 13, 1, Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become a shouting brass or plain symbol. How many plain and symbols do you think we got? I'm telling you. Lord have mercy. It's a lot. Watch this. Next one. Uh, marriage and divorce. This is a touchy subject. Um, but anyway, we're going to deal with it. Not all, I said not all, but most Pentecostal churches believe that if a man or a woman ever divorce, he or she should never remarry. Because that is a sin. Ministers do not marry again. Period. Also, if a man or woman of God divorces, listen to this, they lose their title, their assignment, and their calling. Um... That is a big thing that, that people deal with. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to hit something tonight. Southern Baptist have, a, a, is in the middle of this one too. Yeah, and uh, do you know how much of a miracle it is tonight that I am your pastor? I, I'm being honest with you. A lot of you may not know, but I'm a divorced man. And uh, the probably 95% of stunts Southern Baptist churches would look at me, no matter my education, I'm working toward my doctorate, I'm going to get it to uh, working toward my doctorate, I got my education, I've been pastoring for 16 years, void. Uh, they, they look at that as, and along with the Pentecostal, uh, the Southern Baptists do this too. They don't think that, they think if I were to get a divorce, uh, my calling is void. Uh, do you believe like it, Brian? If I believe like it, I wouldn't be your pastor. Um, here's how much I believe in my calling. As much as I love my wife, my calling, now listen to me, is not based on my marriage. It's based on me and God. Dana did not call me. God called me. Amen. You see what I'm saying? And there's a lot of things I really believe churches are missing. Because they, they, they say husband of one wife. But if you get down into the Greek, it's, it's polygamy. It's more than one wife at a time. Take Abraham, for instance. Abraham had three wives. Take Noah, he had two or three wives. It's King Solomon! First Corinthians, no, First Kings chapter 11, verse 1. 700 wives and 300 concubines. Poor man! Poor man! 
No wonder, Brother Jim, God says, Man, please, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, one wife at a time, please. And I've got one wife. Her name is Dana. She's been my bride for coming on 19 years. I've been in love with her more today. I don't have two wives. I don't care what anybody says. Even the laws of the land will tell you that I've only got one wife. But churches today, now listen, I'm not, I'm just telling you where I've come from. There's a church right here in Campbellsville. Right here in Campbellsville. I, I, the pastor had a massive heart attack. I filled the pulpit for him for, golly, how long, Dang, six, seven weeks. Long time till we got back in the pulpit. Five people got saved. We had a baptism service. The church was, I mean, God's good. And uh, the judge, he got back and he said, I need to talk to you for a moment. And uh, he put me back in his office. It's a true story. He slid a check across, the, across his desk that day. And he said, I won't be needing you no more. And he said, by the way, he said, I just want to let you know how I feel. He said, you can never be a pastor of a church. And I just looked at him and, and whatever, I, I said this, maybe I shouldn't. And I said, I'm glad my calling don't, don't depend upon you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Let me tell you something. If God died on the cross for all sin, Come on now. Yep. All sin. All sin. Did, he, did He leave mine out? No. Did He leave yours out? No. Can He use a divorced man? Yes. A divorced woman? Yes. If He can use a donkey to speak to Balaam and a rooster to speak to Peter, He can use a divorced man or woman out there to speak to a congregation. He can do that. But you've got to get all this stuff out of your minds. You've got to get it out of your mind. Because I'm telling you, Romans chapter 11 verse 29 says, All Gifts and callings are irrevocable. That means if Dana Michelle Rafferty left me tonight, I'm still a pastor. That's tough. You ain't going nowhere. <laughs> told us if you go somewhere, I've already got a bag packed or you can't outrun me. I mean that. But Brian, I, even, if it didn't, even if it didn't say what you just said, you know, the word says that if God gives and God takes away. True. And no person and your sin or no person's sin, like in your in your case, it was not your sin. It was, you know, and I don't I don't know anything other than what you've told us. But the sins of someone else can't take away what God's given to you. God gave it. Yeah. How arrogant, how dare they be so arrogant to think that a human can take something God gave from you. That's right. You know, get over it. That's, that's exactly <laughs> right. God's big and He's well, loved. And then I'll go a step here. It says, do not judge. And that puts, your, that puts their self in the, and trying to be in the heavenly realm. So. Sure. Yeah. I'm telling you, I've learned so much. But I've had uh, churches find out I was divorced. I was in the middle of a revival and I uh, preached one night. And I was in, uh, uh, oh Lord, hit me up. First Baptist. I don't even know why I was at a First Baptist church anyway. But I was at a First Baptist church over there where Kenny Catherine's dad said, What was it at? Monticello. That's right. First Baptist in Monticello. And uh, big church. And uh, done a revival and God was working. After the revival was over, Courtney called me back to the back. Gave me my check and they said, we're closing the revival down. And I was like, why? They said, because you, we found out tonight that you're divorcing me. And uh, I'm like, wow. You know, I pray for them. We need to really pray for people like that because they, they just don't know. They just don't know. So that was a one-time invitation. And, uh, and people have hurt me. They have hurt me because they still hold me condemned. Uh, so, uh, but anyway, that, that's that's a personal issue to me, and I've worked through it. And the amazing thing is, and uh, I told Dana this, uh, my story is different from a lot of people. I walked in and found my bed, my wife in bed with another man. Literally walked in and found my wife in bed with another man. The man that she was in bed with, she ended up getting pregnant by that man uh, with that child, and uh, so. My story, Brenda, you know I'm telling the truth in this house tonight. That's just the way it is. It's, but the amazing thing is, since that time, 17 years after that time, she called this church. My wife knows I'm telling the truth tonight, so I, I ain't got to hide anything. She called this church. I was going to be going to a staff meeting. And she said these words. She said, a lot of things have changed over the years, and I, I know the Lord now. And she said, I'm asking you to forgive me. Yeah. And so I forgave her. And uh, we forgave each other. And uh, so... Uh, God is good. And I, I often wonder how many blessings people have missed because they're religious and they think they got their own ideas. Uh, but just, Matthew 19, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8. That's right. That's right. 
uh, I've had pastors to tell me, they said, Brian, you're the head of that household, and if she gets a divorce, you will stand before God one day, uh, and you'll be guilty. And I'm like, oh, hey. And I'll be honest with God, I didn't understand the Bible like I do now. But I was believing everything. <laughs> everything here, I was scared to death. I'm like, oh, hey, i got to get her back. Right. Well, I got her back. She cheated on me again. Why do we not sit with you have not had our stone in the public square? Yeah. That's biblical. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, look what the Lord has in store for you that's right, right there. Right. He had that package wrapped up waiting on knowing you were gonna get it. There he is. Yeah, I was that's when you think that surprised God? No. He knows all things, right? Yeah. So if he knows all things, that shock him. No. See, I think a lot of times we go through stuff in our life. And we question God about it. But God sat here tonight speaking, I hopefully through me to you, and said, the reason why some of you are going through what you're going through tonight is not for you, but for somebody else. Yeah. Amen. And if you'll hold on long enough, they'll show you. Yeah. Sometimes there'll be somebody cross paths with you, not by accident or coincidence, but you're, you're sitting there going, God, why did I go through that? And all of a sudden, that person looked at you and said, hey, I'm going through a problem, and you went through that same problem. See, God's Word will not come back void. Everybody here tonight's got a purpose. And you will cross paths one day in the name of Jesus Christ. And you need to share your testimony. Because the Bible says in Revelation, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony, that He'll be known. So if you don't share your testimony, I think you're really missing out on your blessing. Amen? Amen. All right. Amen. Look at this. Public school activities. Um, not all, but, but some Pentecostals believe or they disapprove of school students attending shows and dances and Classes, uh, dancing classes and theaters and uh, engaging in school activities against their religion. Okay, here's what I'll tell you. I, I guess I could probably see some of that. I guess I'm an old daddy, old school daddy. Uh, I, I just believe in the name of Jesus Christ that I do believe that sometimes, especially being kids, they get too close. You know, and they wear the wrong clothing and this, that, and the other. And what... A lot of people don't understand. I believe in the, I believe in the spiritual realm. That if somebody is going through a problem in their life, and they run across somebody who is, and maybe they're having a weak moment in their life, and they cross that thing in their life, that that spirit, uh, that spirit can be, can attach to you if you're not careful. You say, Brian, how do you know? Well, I don't know about you, but I battled that stuff before. I don't know about you, but. Uh, it's just the way it is. That's why I believe Job in the Bible in Job 31, he had a problem with looking at women. And Job said, God, I make a covenant with my eyes to you that I'll never look at the nakedness of another woman. He loved women. And he looked at it. He did. I know y'all look at you like, he did. That's just a, he, and he said, God, I've got a problem. i got a problem. Uh, oh, this is good. God just gave this to me. God can't heal if you don't reveal which, if you don't reveal something, God can't heal it. Now, he can, but God is waiting for that confession to say, God, I, I got something going on in my life that I need healing with. See, a doctor can only heal what you reveal. Golly, that's so good. Somebody think, write that down. I'm going to preach on that. <laughs> a doctor can only heal what you reveal. But if you go in there and notice what the first thing a doctor asks you, where's it hurt? What's, what's ailing you? What's, that's a good old word right there. Ailing you. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> What's hurting? Where are you hurting at? Because see, if you got there and said, oh, I'm not, I'm not hurting at all, but you'll get up and walk out of that doctor's office still hurting. But if you reveal where you're hurting, you can get healed. That help y'all? Yeah. That really helped me just that tonight that a doctor can only heal what you reveal. So man, in the name of Jesus, start revealing some things to God. God already knows about it anyway, but God wants to talk to you. So maybe the reason why some of you are still hurting is because you've not revealed it. Man, I feel that in my heart tonight. I really feel that some of you may be battles, and I feel the Lord on me. I got I got a minister on that just for a moment. I really believe that maybe some of you are holding on to some past experiences in your life, and the reason why you're not healed is because you've not revealed it. But a doctor can only heal what you reveal. So I really believe the question God is asking me tonight to ask you is these words: Where are you hurting at? Mm. Hallelujah! How many of y'all felt that? One? Amen. I felt that in my heart. Take it and whatever God wants to do with it, God will work it out. Uh, they, the, I tore up now. Lord. Hey, Brother Ron, it's like I was raised when I was 14 years old. And I never did tell nobody about I was pregnant. And I 
not be scared of anything. It really did. Not scared and nervous touch. Didn't know nothing about it. And he was, he really scared you because he, he would pay you be screwed up or he'd kill your parents or whatever. Mm -hmm. You didn't say nothing to nobody. He was too scared to. But I did. And I always went to church. And I tried to get him and his wife to go to church. Because I lived with my dad at the time. And I, and I looked at him as a brother, not as a sex partner. I never did believe in none of that stuff. Wet and talk. You know, you kept your dress down, you kept your pants up. And, I mean, it's just, but, you know, I, I have held that for 37 years and have laid myself. And, you know, I have helped so many teenagers on the bus in total because I thank God because when you reveal that stuff like you said, turns that bad and he turns it into good for his glory. And I have kept a lot of kids yeah. that. I really believe Satan can only control what you don't tell. Yeah. I'm trying to work through this. I'm working through something right now myself because if you hold it in, all, all you're doing is a bad medicine. It's, 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 it's like a cancer. It's eating away at you. It's like you're keeping a secret. Yeah, like you're keeping a secret. And the only person you're really hurting is you. But I really believe that Satan can only control what you don't tell. But when you start speaking it's that, that this is where I was and this is where I'm at, or hallelujah, this is where I'm going. And that Satan can't control me no longer because why? I, I'm, I'm being healed because I'm revealing what's going on where I'm hurting at. And so if you're keeping that in, and I don't know, I really believe God's ministering, but if, if you're keeping that in, uh, maybe that's the reason why you're still hurting and you're still sick. What if I just told you that God can only heal what you reveal? That, that when you start speaking it, that enemy starts loosening his hold on your life. You're not under his bondage no more. Does that make sense? It's, yeah. You're not in the, under the bondage no more. Because all of us in here, if you don't tell the truth, all of us in here have a story. Mm. But the only way God will get the glory is if you tell the story. Oh my God, that's good. That's the only way. That's why I like when God starts speaking because it's anointed. And I really believe that if somebody's getting ministered to tonight. I know it's not about the Pentecostal, but we're going to take an exit real quick. So, the doctor can only heal what what? What you, what you reveal. If you open your mouth and you start confessing it, Satan can't what? Control it. You got it? And everybody's got a story. And the only way for God to get the glory is if you tell the story. story. That young man back there. Listen, y'all y'all think this is so I'm telling you. There he is. He thought he got in trouble downstairs. Don't get in trouble no more in the name of Jesus. But he's up here and this is what he's doing. Y'all got you hear me? He's listening. He's listening. He's learning. And may God just bless you and train you up right. And may you work for God, amen. Brother Brown, that's like with me. Prayed over me ever since then. I've been getting better and better. Every day. And I pray to God that instead of mess and being raised, it's going to be reversed. And I go back down. I pray to God that I, I always all the In the name of Jesus Christ. It's just so it seems so hard to function, you know, with the medication. Yeah. And that has to do a lot with. Even down so much because it drains your body. Well, other than stroke, your body's just so tired. Yeah. But every day, every second, every minute, every hour, every day, mm -hmm. you're getting better. Mm -hmm. I am. You're getting better. You're getting better. You just keep praising Him. Yes. There's power in praise. Amen. Just keep praising Him. God, thank you for waking me up. God, today I thank you that you are my medicine. Yes, He is. You are my. You are my. The air that I breathe. So every day, water. Just keep doing it. I know people look at it and say, "Well, whatever." I'm just sitting telling you, it works. It works. It really does. Um, so there's some things in here. Uh, they Pentecostal believe in never exposing the body. Brian Keith Rafferty believes in never exposing the body. Not me. You got a ring on it? Yeah. Can't touch it. Yeah. Well, if you got a ring on it, have fun. Amen? Amen? I know y'all looking at me like, Brian, you're crazy. No, I'm telling Dana, my favorite chapter in the Bible is 1 Corinthians chapter 7. It's a sex, it's a sex chapter. 
See y'all are looking like who? Who made it? Who designed it? Who gave it to you? How come we don't talk about it? Scared to death. Pastors are scared to death to mention sex in church because they think they're going to get fired. If y'all fire me because I talk about sex, you got a problem. Maybe you need something. <laughs> if you're married. Yeah. I don't know where it comes from. <laughs> Hallelujah. All the faces are red. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Including mine. It's okay. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I messed up. Edit that part, Aaron, if you don't mind. No, don't edit. Maybe it's truth. This is truth. We were scared to death to talk about this sure. stuff. But it's in the Bible. God gave it. It is a gift. It is a gift. Not to be abused. It is a, it's a precious gift from God. So, man, hallelujah. i got a ring on. I'm going to have fun. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to close on that note. <laughs> all in favor. All in favor. Don't y'all run, all right? But uh, we need to conclude. I guess I'll try to finish this up next week. Maybe I need to get But, yeah. I'm glad you are, Tom. I, I, for no jokes, I am so thankful to be in a church that, that leaves me alone. Because I'm telling you right there, after I made some statements like that, there probably would be a businessman. Alright. It's true. Uh, <laughs> well, let's, uh, is it, everybody good? Everybody good? Alright. Let's pray and uh, let's ask God to, to bless us as we leave this house. And I'll see y'all Sunday morning. Okay, Father God, I love you and thank you, Lord, for this day. God, you're so fun. You are. And uh, Lord, I, I just praise you. I thank you, God, for all that you have done and all that you're doing. I thank you, Lord, for this wonderful church, these beautiful people. I praise you and thank you, dear God, for allowing me, dear God, to be the pastor. I'm so humbled by that. I'm so thankful to God that uh, I am forgiven. I'm born again. I'm saved. On my way to heaven, dear God, and I rejoice in that truth. Lord, I just thank you so much to God for all my friends here tonight. Lord, I pray a hedge of protection around them, dear God, that, Lord, that you would just anoint this time, anoint them going home, dear God, place your angels all around their house. And bring us safely back to your house of worship this Sunday, dear God. I'm excited to know what's next, to see what's next, dear God. To be a part of this, this growing kingdom, dear God. I thank you for the word of God. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. Thank you, Lord, that we can have fun in your house. We can laugh. We can smile. We can cut up together, dear God. And I'm just so thankful for tonight. Be glorified, dear God. I love you and praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. And all God's beautiful people say it. Amen. Amen. God bless you, God.